In this video, I'm going to explain the cable pulling calculator of Cable Pro Web. Cable pulling calculations are used for several reasons. Assisting with the planning of a cable pull before it's actually done. Determining the forces exerted on the cables. And ensuring that the forces acting on the cable, such as tension or sidewall pressures, will not damage the cable during pulling. To perform a cable pulling calculation, you will need to have a manufacturer data sheet for the cable, which includes overall diameter of the cable, weight of the cable, and maximum allowable pulling tension. A layout drawing or sketch of the pool, which is ideally broken down into sections such as straight lengths, bends, rises, and falls. The sections of the diagram on screen are displayed in the table below. You will also need the total number of cables which will be pulled, and if you plan to pull the cables inside a conduit, you will need to know the size. Let's take a quick look at the main user interface. The cable section has inputs for cable data, such as data from the manufacturer datasheet and total number of cables. Multiple cable types can be entered into the calculator. The installation section includes conduit size and direction of the cable pool. The formation of the pool needs to be selected in this section. There is also a section for friction input. Once this data has been entered, sections of the pool matching your layout drawing should then be added. In this tutorial, I will show all of the input sections in the user interface and where to get the required input data. I will also explain the calculation results and warnings, and then show how to use the calculator by going through an example calculation. When you open a new calculation, the Add Section window will appear. You should select the section type from the drop-down menu, which matches your first section from your layout drawing. You should enter data in the pop-up window based on the section type selected, such as length, and for a horizontal bend, the angle, or bend radius. Note that when you enter a radius, you must consider the minimum allowable bending radius of the cable. There are many different types of sections that you can select. A preview of each section type is shown once you select it, and the data inputs required are also shown. Each of the section types are explained under the Cable Sections page of the online help manual. There are large bend section types available, which are mainly used for ducts installed using directional drilling. With this section type, you only need to enter any two of the five input values. Refer to your sketch to determine which values you have available that you can enter. There are rollers and push and pull machines, which can be inserted at any point along your cable pull as required to assist with the installation of the cables. Push and pull machines are useful for when maximum pulling tension is exceeded. You can insert them into your cable pull to reduce the tension by the machine effort value, and you can experiment by keeping a machine at some intermediary point along your pull and switching the machine on or off to see its effects on the tension. Next, we will talk about the other input data that you need to enter. Let's look at the inputs for the cables. All the cable types in the pool need to be entered here, including their quantities. For each cable type, enter a description, such as 630mm squared copper single core, to make cables easier to identify. The quantity is the number of cables of that type which will be in the pool. The diameter and weight per cable are taken from the cable datasheet. Take care to match the units of the inputs. The maximum tension per cable should be taken from the manufacturer, and often it will be on the cable datasheet or in their documentation. You can also calculate the maximum allowable tension of a cable if you can't get the actual value from the manufacturer. There is a section in the help manual called Maximum Allowable Pulling Tension, which gives guidance on this. The sidewall pressure is the radial force exerted on a cable at a bend point when the cable is under tension. The value for maximum sidewall pressure, also called maximum sidewall bearing pressure, can be harder to get from the manufacturer or cable datasheet, but it is important unless there are no bends in your cable pool. There is a section in the help manual called maximum allowable sidewall pressure, which provides standard values for you if you can't get it from the manufacturer. To add another cable type to the pool, you can press add, and then to move between the different cable types, press the arrows. 
Make sure you enter the total number of cables for each cable type under quantity. Next, let's take a look at the formation section. The next section we'll look at is formation. The number of cables and their formation in the pool affects the overall tension. Make sure to select a formation that matches the total number of cables for all cable types in your pool. For example, if the total quantity of cables equals 4, then you should select the diamond formation. Or if the total quantity is 3, you should select the trefoil or cradled formation, and so on. Depending on the formation selected, a weight correction factor is automatically calculated. The equations for these weight correction factors are given in the help manual. Weight correction factor is generally between 1 for a single cable up to 1.4 for more than 4 cables. Weight correction factor affects the effective friction and tension as well as sidewall pressure calculations. Users can enter a custom weight correction factor. A higher weight correction factor means a higher tension. Next up, the installation section. Let's look at the installation section. The direction of pull can be changed to reverse the pull direction of the sections. Once all the sections and input data have been entered, it's also a good idea to check both forward and reverse directions. Often the overall tensions will be very different depending on the direction of pull, and this will be something for you to consider. The real back tension is the force required to pull the cable off the cable drum. There is a simple equation given in the help manual which can be performed by hand calculation. For the cable pulling layout currently on screen, our weight value is 6.35 kilograms per meter. Let's also assume the total length of our cable drum is 200 meters. Let's also assume the coefficient of friction is 0.45 and g is equal to 9.8. Following this calculation, we get a real back tension of approximately 5,600 newtons, so we can enter that value into the real back tension. Note that if there are multiple drums for all the cables being pulled, you should sum up the real back tensions for all of them and enter a single value. The installed and conduit selection should be checked for cables being pulled inside conduits or unchecked for cables being pulled along a cable ladder. For cables installed inside conduits, you must enter the conduit inside diameter, and then certain checks will be made, such as a cable clearance check. The probability of cable jamming is also checked, and a warning will appear if there is an issue. The tension reduction factor is typically used for multiple cables, where the forces are not evenly distributed among each cable. Typically, this value will be between 50 and 80%. For example, if three cables are being pulled, it's recommended that two cables bear the load, meaning the tension reduction factor should be 66%. The default value of 80% is conservative and doesn't need to be changed. Next up, let's take a look at the friction section of the calculator. Now, we'll take a look at the friction section. The coefficient of friction is a measure of the amount of friction between two surfaces. For a cable pull, this friction is between the cable jacket and the conduit inner surface. The normal coefficient of friction is a dimensionless number that is defined as the ratio between friction force and normal force, which is the force of gravity acting upon the cable. That value can be entered here, under the normal heading. Note that friction is higher to start an object in motion compared to keeping it in motion, therefore it is not recommended to stop during a cable pull. Typical values for the normal friction are 0.5 for dry cables or conduits, or between 0.15 and 0.35 for well-lubricated cables and ducts. The friction at high sidewall pressures is applied for cables during bends, where the coefficient of friction is reduced, but only when the sidewall pressure on the cables exceeds the threshold. We recommend the friction for high sidewall pressures to be chosen as half the value of the entered normal value. However, if you wish to ignore this phenomenon to be conservative, then enter the same value as the normal friction. The sidewall pressure threshold can be left as default. There is technical information about friction as well as typical values for use of different lubricants in the help manual. 
Now that you've been familiarized with each of the input sections of the calculator, it's time to show you an example calculation. It's time to take a look at an example calculation in the cable pulling calculator. The cable we're going to be pulling is a 400mm squared copper cable with XLPE insulation. Firstly, we should take a look at the section inputs. Currently displayed on screen is the diagram we will be using, along with a table denoting the section inputs. Feel free to pause the video if you wish to enter these inputs yourself. Next, it's important to enter the specifics of the cable. The table currently displayed on screen shows the values of the copper cable for this calculation. Feel free to pause the video if you wish to enter these values yourself. For this example, there are four conditions that we wish to test. Currently displayed on screen is the cable pull diagram and the control parameters. Firstly, we want to see the tension from point A to point H with a dry conduit. So a forward pull with a normal friction coefficient of 0 0.5. We then want to see the tension from point H to point A with a dry conduit. So a reverse pull with a normal friction coefficient of 0 0.5. We then want to see the same two pulls, both forward and reverse, except we want to have a lubricated conduit. So a normal friction coefficient of 0 0.25. Let's take a look at each of the conditions. For a forward pull with a normal friction coefficient of 0.5, the calculated tension is 62.6 kN. A reverse pull with a normal friction coefficient of 0.5 results in a calculated tension of 61.1 kN. A forward pull with a normal friction coefficient of 0.25 results in a calculated tension of 30.6 kN. And finally, a reverse pull with a normal friction coefficient of 0.25 results in a calculated tension of 23.7 kN. As can be seen with this particular pull, the reverse direction of pull reduces tension slightly for dry conduits and much more significantly for lubricated conduits. Additionally, having a lubricated conduit more than halves the tension for this particular cable pull in both cases. Now that we've successfully generated a calculation, it's time to move on to generating a report. You can easily generate a report by pressing the report button at the top of the window. To include your own company logo in the reports, click on the settings button and upload your image file. Make sure you press accept after you upload your logo. You can also add custom report fields to the reports, such as your company name, a contact name, and a phone number. No more than three fields are recommended. Remember to tick Show Custom Fields and Reports and press the Accept button. Your custom logo and custom fields will appear in every report that you generate. By default, the report includes the project name and calculation name, both of which come from the names that you set in the software. These can be customized. You can email the report to a single email or multiple email addresses. Once the report is generated, a PDF will be downloaded and can be opened from within your web browser. The report shows all of the inputs and calculations, information about the installation, formation, coefficients of friction, details of cables including maximum permissible tension, the inputted cable sections, the calculated tensions and sidewall pressures, along with calculated cable clearance and cable jamming, are shown in the report. The report also includes calculation checks, which are based on the calculated tension, sidewall pressure, cable clearance, and cable jamming. Any failed checks will be highlighted in red. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please check out our other tutorials for Cable Pro Web.